Recently I visited the Isle of Portland in Dorset. It really is a remarkable area of England. I embarked upon a 15 mile walk around the whole of the Isles Peninsula, walking along the coastal path. The walk is an extremely picturesque and beautiful one, yet features some remarkable historic sites, of which have an incredible story. In this video, we'll point out these sites and give you some information on these. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea, and join us as we enjoy a historical and scenic walk around the Isle of Portland in Dorset. Remember, if you do enjoy our videos, please support the channel by subscribing. Upon leaving the car, you pick up the coastal path from leaving the car park. The views of the local area are extremely spectacular and beautiful. From this area, you can get a view of the town of Portland, but also see Chesil Beach and Weymouth too. This area of the south coast in Dorset has a rich history, for example contains forts and castles which were built here during the Napoleonic era to defend England from the French, and also preparations and training for D-Day took place in Portland, with thousands of British, Canadian and American soldiers based here. The Verne Citadel was built in the 19th century. It is located on the highest point of Portland and sits in a commanding position overlooking Portland Harbour. It was built as Portland's main defensive fortification, with open gun emplacements. During World War I and World War II, it became the headquarters of the coastal artillery. During World War II, a radar was installed inside the citadel. Today, this building is used as a prison for over 500 adult males serving medium to long term prison sentences. This really is a colossal and intimidating structure. Opposite the Verne Citadel is the Verne High Angle Battery. Stay tuned for a detailed history and walk around this place. This is a former 19th century gun battery and is home to the locally named Ghost Tunnels. It was built in 1892 to possess high angle guns. These guns were to be fired at such an angle that shells would be shot up into the air and would drop down to inflict maximum damage to the upper deck of an enemy ship. This battery had six positions for these guns. As technology moved on and smaller ships such as torpedo boats were invented, the guns at this battery became less likely to score a hit on an enemy ship. From 1918, the battery was used to store field guns from France, however interestingly, in the 1960s, one of the emplacements was used for testing the capsules in which nuclear material was transported. RAF Portland is a former Royal Air Force and Rotor radar station. It is located close to the Verne Citadel and today sits on the site of Fancy's family farm, a petting zoo. During World War II, this site was a radar station and in the 1950s, this site was used to detect Soviet fast flying jets during the Cold War. It became non-operational in 1958 but was taken over by the US Air Force and they built a relay station on the site. There is a bunker on site here as well, which unfortunately, due to theft and vandalism, you cannot visit. Portland's quarries are fascinating and fun to explore. They are full of tunnels, gullies and fossil filled rocks. Stone has been quarried on Portland since the Roman times and was shipped to London in the 14th century. It was used in the 14th century to build the Palace of Westminster, the Tower of London and was used as the first stones for London Bridge. The extraction of Portland stone picked up as an industry in the early 17th century. Christopher Wren decided to choose Portland stone for the newly rebuilt St Paul's Cathedral in London following the Great Fire of London. This decision saw a huge boost to Portland's local economy. In 1865, the island was connected by railway to the rest of the country, allowing stone to be transported easier from the quarries. Many monuments too have been built from Portland stone, for example the cenotaph that commemorates the millions killed fighting for their country. Also the gravestones for British personnel killed in the First and Second World Wars were made from Portland stone.
To many people who walk past, this may just look like a disused shed. However, this building once housed locomotives that served the Admiralty quarries and transported stone from these quarries. English Heritage states that it is unusual for locomotive sheds like this one from the period to survive in such a good manner. Opposite the train shed is a Young Offenders Institute that is in use today. Originally opening in 1848, Her Majesty's Prison Portland held adult convicts. The purpose was to hold prisoners and to make use of their labour in the construction of the Portland Breakwaters. Today, it houses Young Offenders. St Peter's Church was built in 1870 for a cost of £800 by using convict labour from the adjacent prison. It was used by the residents of the prison and the military garrison that was established at the Vern Citadel. It was redundant in 1973 and today is privately owned. It features some stained glass windows, however during the Second World War, one of the church windows suffered bomb damage. We've previously covered Rufus Castle in a video, however it's a brilliant and picturesque ruin. Named after William II or William Rufus, it offered a strategic defensive importance to the Isle of Portland. Overlooking Church Ope Cove, its history is a rather sad one nowadays as it really isn't accessible. Known locally as the Bow and Arrow Castle, due to the keep's arrow loops, it overlooks the Shambles Sandbank. Approximately three miles out to sea, it is one of the most feared and hazardous navigational issues for ships. In 1805, the Earl of Avergaveni sank here, killing 263 people. Amongst the dead was John Wordsworth, the brother of the romantic poet William Wordsworth. Church Oak Cove is a small secluded and sheltered beach on the eastern side of Portland. Today much debris from the quarries covers the sand. In 789, the first recorded Viking attack on Britain occurred on Portland's coast, and it's believed that they landed in Church Hope Cove. This area is famous too for smuggling, and was one of the most famous smuggling beaches in Portland. During World War II, two pillboxes were constructed to overlook the cove, and a minefield was placed at the back of the cove. There are also a number of different wrecks in the surrounding waters here, making it a popular destination for divers. St Andrew's Church is a ruined church located above Church Oak Cove, near to the castle. It was Portland's first parish church and today is one of the island's most historical sites. It is believed that the site was once occupied by a Saxon church. Later, Edward the Confessor would give this to a group of Benedictine monks who built a new church over the Saxon foundations. In 1340 and 1404, French raiders landed in Church Oak Cove and torched the church, and both times it would have to be rebuilt. Around 1470, a tower was added at St Andrews, however landslips caused extensive damage to the church in the 17th century. The church site was first excavated in 1898, and it did suffer some bomb damage during World War II. Today, you can see the ruins of the church and many different gravestones littered around the area. Pennsylvania Castle is a Gothic Revival mansion that overlooks Church Oak Cove. Today, it is a hotel and Portland's most expensive residential property. However, during the Second World War, Winston Churchill, General Eisenhower and General de Gaulle would meet here to finalise their plans for the Normandy landings. Possibly the most famous legacy of Portland is Portland Stone, which was quarried on a mass scale on the island and today still is. As mentioned earlier, it was even used to build some of London's most famous landmarks, for example St Paul's Cathedral and Buckingham Palace. As you walk around Portland, you find yourself walking through many different quarries and there are reminders everywhere of the Isle's history, including a series of pulleys and winches which were used by the quarries.
Portlandville Lighthouse is one of Dorset's most popular landmarks. The Portland coast for centuries has been notorious for a number of shipwrecked vessels and is a dangerous area to navigate for sailors. From Roman times, beacon fires were lit to warn ships from the dangers of the bill. George I approved plans for a first lighthouse to be made to mark the danger. This whole area is surrounded by warnings for sailors and today you walk amongst the quarrying operations that existed in this area. On our walk, we marked Portland Bill as a halfway point for our journey, completing a walk around the east part of the Isle. The western part of Portland doesn't have as many landmarks littered along its walk, however the views are spectacular. Walking by farms and through the grassy areas, you really do get some amazing views of the coast and cliffs. Around the Isle of Portland, there are also a number of different pillboxes that exist from the Second World War. Also, gunnery positions are placed overlooking the sea too. During World War II, two Lewis guns were placed here and they had some success, shooting down a Dornier DO-17 bomber onto Chesil Beach during the Battle of Britain. Also, the battery claimed successful hits here on a German E-boat. Those positions make up the defences of Blacknall Battery and overlook Hallelujah Bay. This bay is called this due to the fact that interestingly a local quarryman who made the original path to the bay would etch biblical inscriptions into the boulders. Then he would cry hallelujah when each text was complete. Blacknall Fort today is a residential dwelling, however it was the main part of the battery mentioned earlier. During World War I, this battery received extra guns, including two 15 pounder BL guns and one 5 inch BL gun and also three Bren guns. During World War II and the Battle of Britain, a German Junkers Ju-88 crashed alongside the battery on the 11th of August 1940. Although the plane was set to make a perfect landing, it snagged on the battery's telephone wires. The plane landed intact and no fatalities occurred, with the four crew members receiving injuries. Possibly the most harrowing experience that occurred within the battery though, was it witnessed the Slapton Sands Massacre of Exercise Tiger. This was a large scale rehearsal for D-Day that went horrifically wrong. The participating American soldiers were attacked by German E-boats and most of the 700 casualties drowned and their bodies were recovered and taken to Castletown in Portland, near to where the castle today stands. As witnesses to the event, the gunners at Blacknall Battery were authorised to open fire but this order was withdrawn due to the fear of casualties injured by friendly fire. Today this fort is incorporated into someone's house and could have been featured on the TV show Grand Designs, however much of the fort and battery have been left untouched. The final part of the walk takes you through a few more quarries. The quarries here were established in the 18th century and progressively worked inland throughout the 19th century. Quarrying here would end in the 20th century and much of the land would become a nature reserve and a sculpture park. From this area, you get a remarkable view of the incredible Chesil Beach. This is probably my favourite place on earth, having countless memories here as a child on family holidays. The sheer wildness and ferocity of the waves at Chesil are memorable and unforgettable. It runs for 29 kilometres, finishing at the Isle of Portland, and is a member of the Jurassic Coast and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Named Dead Man's Bay by writer Thomas Hardy, due to the amount of shipwrecks that occurred here, it's been a formidable place for sailors. Behind Chesil is the fleet, which has an interesting history. From Chesil Beach and the fleet, the bouncing bomb was tested during the Second World War. This bomb would then be used in the infamous Dambuster raids. Along different parts of Chesil, there are many different pillboxes and anti-tank blocks, which were constructed to protect England from invasion. 
The walk around the Isle of Portland ends at the peak overlooking Fortune's Well and Weymouth. Here you can see a few reminders of Portland's history. The Olympic ring stone statue acts as a reminder of the modern side of the Isle's history, as the sailing events of the London 2012 Olympics were hosted in Portland and nearby Weymouth. Also here, you can see the Portland Cenotaph. This war memorial was created in dedication to the local soldiers who died during the First World War, and at a later date, the names of the soldiers who died in the Second World War were added. The walk around Portland is a trip throughout history. From Viking invasions, to quarrying stone for London following the Great Fire, to medieval castles, to defending Britain during World War II, the Isle of Portland has a rich history. We hope you've enjoyed this tour around Portland and also enjoyed seeing some of the sights. To support the channel, make sure to subscribe and also for more videos, check out our other videos. We now have a rich selection to choose from, from medieval castles to stories of bravery throughout the Second World War. Thanks again for watching.